जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण आई वांट टू पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू माय स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर श्रीमद् जगत गुरु सुदर्शन आचार्य जी महाराज आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू लॉर्ड श्री रमानुज आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू मदर लक्ष्मी एंड आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू लॉर्ड श्री मन्नारायण आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू लॉर्ड श्री कृष्णा to radha rani to all the gopis and gopas to all the gomatas to all the plants and trees that took their form to take part in this divine leela when lord shri man narayan descended to the into the material universe in his avatar as lord shri krishna i welcome all of you physically here the shri narayan dham and i welcome those of you that are watching this discourse locally nationally and internationally and i welcome in advance those that's going to be subsequently watching this discourse when it is posted in the various groups from around the world as i promised in this week i will reveal a secret and i think that is why so many people are here today because i said secrets mysteries the greatest suspense writer is lord shriman narayan the greatest director is lord shriman narayan and the greatest storyteller is lord shriman narayan and i'm sure not only here but this great secret as of today what's the date today 22nd of august <coughs> revealed eternally lost in time and i'm re establishing it this secret is revealed eternally lost in time revealed a thousand years ago and i'm now re establishing this revelation i am but an insignificant dust particle at the feet of my guru and even more insignificant at the feet of the entire shri sampradaya however having said this it is my mission as commanded by my spiritual master to spread lord narayan's teachings and lord narayan himself to the western world as was done 1000 years ago by our adi guru the first guru lord shri ramanuj and the secret and the suspense and the mystery the intrigue centers around lord shri ramanuj however like all great suspense stories we have to start at the sita beginning yes otherwise once you know the secret in the beginning there's no reason to watch the movie anyone disagree with me i see shovin change from a nigerian to a hindi speaking boy and from a hindi speaking boy today he turned into a tamil singing boy all right you all noticed who knows when he'll change again or who knows whether he will remain the same 
and this is the human destiny human destiny and the human behavior is ever changing philosophy is ever change but vishishadvaita has remained constant vishishadvaita has remained unchanged and constant <coughs> since creation in every creation the only truth is vishishadvaita and then it gets lost how many of you before attending this satsang ever heard of the word vishesh advaita put your hands up how many of you knew that lord narayan was the supreme personality of godhead before attending this satsang put your hands up you knew ganita Did you know that he was the supreme personality of Godhead, or did you know that Lord Sri Krishna was the supreme personality of Godhead? Always knew Lord Narayan. You always knew Lord Narayan. Okay. Anyone else? Sorry. You always knew. Okay. Two. Anyone else? Okay, no difference. Anyone else? So a very small percentage heard of Lord Narayan. A very small percentage. Yet he is the supreme personality of Godhead and he lives in your soul. his body is your soul his body is your soul and then your soul which is his body is embodied in this material body so if ignorance persists now then ignorance persisted then ignorance persisted then 5000 years ago lord narayan incarnated as veda vyas and compiled the vedas then this teachings of the vedas became lost where from where did this teachings of the vedas get lost from the minds of human kind it remains eternally in its absolute form however it gets lost from the minds of human kind vedas can never really get lost but it is lost to you due to ignorance ignorance when you are in a state of ignorance and you are looking for some knowledge then any fool becomes knowledgeable who knows a bit more than you is it not so many fools created many philosophies
When the Vedas were created or compiled, in the Vedas itself, there is only one philosophy. Veda Vyas, the incarnation of Lord Sriman Narayan, creates only one philosophy called Vedanta. Vedanta. When this philosophy is lost from the minds of people, it means there are no more regulations that they are following. And subsequent generations, what happens to them? After 100 years, 200 years, 500 years? Get amnesia. Amnesia or they start following a concocted form of the Vedas. And it happened when Lord Sri Krishna left 5,000 years ago, Kali Yug set in. And when Kali Yug sent in, through the influence of Kali, the crystal clear absolute truth of Lord Sriman Narayan as expounded in the Vedas became overshadowed by those steeped in ignorance. And it became so dramatic that it impelled the Lord to reincarnate <coughs> again. It impelled the Lord to reincarnate again. There came a time about 3,000 years ago or even more when man would sacrifice animals for every action. If we wanted A, we would sacrifice an animal. If we wanted B, we would sacrifice an animal. And if we wanted C, we would sacrifice an animal in the name of the Vedas. In the name of the Vedas. And the mind of man was so distorted that Lord Sriman Narayan incarnated as Lord Buddha and he decried the Vedas. He refuted the teachings of the Vedas and he taught non injury. It was easier for Lord Narayan to kick out the Vedas and teach non-violence through atheism than revert the mind of man back to the Vedas. He had to take a drastic measure. Who? Oh, Lord Narayan himself became the exponent of atheistic philosophy. And then he instructed Lord Shiva to incarnate as Adi Shankar Acharya and expound a trans-theistic philosophy, a trans-theistic philosophy called 
Advaita. What does transtheistic mean? What does transtheistic mean? No, he never get trans. <laughs> he never get trans. Sunni, you want me to cool your trans? Or you want me to pull your trans? <laughs> you get trans, Sunni. What trans you get, Sunni? Anybody get trans? Sita, where's all your Bhadra Kali? All your Kali forms? They passed you by? Okay, they passed Sita by. Because you can't be Kali and Sita and Ashwarya all together. Transtheistic means he expounded a philosophy that is neither theistic nor atheistic. It was in the middle. It was in the middle. Neither theistic nor atheistic. And look at the wisdom of Lord Sriman Narayan. First, there is confusion. First, there is confusion. Then he kicks out the entire Vedas. Then he sends Lord Shiva. He sends Lord Shiva and he kicks out Buddhism and he brings in a trans-theistic philosophy from the Vedas Lord Shiva or Shankar Acharya, Acharya chooses a few Vedic injunctions let's look at it this way what is atheism No God. All right. So God said there was no God. And fools believed it. All right. Then God sent Lord Shiva as Adi Shankar and said, You are God. Dana, even today if I tell you, you are God, how happy are you going to get? So when he kicked out God, and now he said, you are God, and this material universe is an illusion. How nice you feel, Dana. Your wife is an illusion. Your daughter is an illusion. Your children is an illusion. Your tuck shop is an illusion. Only you are God. Dan, dana. Dan and dan. I hope Chris is hearing. Chris is not in satsang today. Or is, satsang is too far. Okay. So can you see how God's simplicity has been misconstrued by man. God's simplicity has been misconstrued by man and sold to the Western world. And also sold in India. And my Transcriber, 
When I phone him after this discourse, he'll say, Acharya Ji, it was so simple, why didn't I think of it? He will say, Acharya Ji, it was so simple, why didn't I think of it? Okay, yes, it is so simple. It is so simple. So let's get back. God has never trusted man to compile the Vedas. And this is why not even the creator, the secondary creator, Lord Brahma, has been given the authority to create the Vedas or compile the Vedas at the beginning of creation. Because Lord Brahma himself goes in Rajogun and Tamogun. So can you take the word of Lord Brahma for granted? No. Nope. So if anybody or any institution has followed one book by Lord Brahma to found his institution, then you think that this institution can have validity? Because as per the Vedas, if any other auxiliary scripture or writing is written or expounded, and if it is contrary to the Vedas, then it must be rejected then it must be rejected. Okay? So, these are Vedic injunctions. This is not something that the Guru is making himself. And there is a book called the Brahma Samhitas, which was only found in the 16th century. And if it was spoken by Brahma, and if it is not found in any aspect of the Vedas, then it is cannot be authentic. Logic and common sense and the rules of the Vedas. Rules of the Vedas. Originally there were how many languages spoken in India? Dana, I want you to be. I want you to be. Two. Sanskrit and? Tamil. Tamil. Sanskrit and? Tamil. The Vedas were written in? Sanskrit. Vedas were written in? Sanskrit. However, since the advent of Kali Yuga and even from the end of Dwapara Yuga, twelve saints were born in South India. Twelve saints were born in South India. And I want you to understand this clearly. These 12 saints in their own language discoursed the Vedas through poetry. Again, I'm going to repeat. Again, I'm going to repeat that good English, Amita, Dr. Singh. Yes. Again, and repeat in the same sentence. Is it good English? I am going to repeat.
Okay. Twelve saints who took the birth from the end of Kalyug up to the year eight seven eight hundred. Seven eight hundred. This caused the Vedas, which were written in Sanskrit, through flowering, beautiful, enchanting poetry. And these poetry is put together is called the Divya. Prabandam. Prabandam. This is the four thousand poetry or poems written by or hymned by or penned and sung by twelve saints right from the end of Dwapara Yoga up to the year 800. There is not one contradiction between these poems and the entire Vedas. There is not one contradiction between these poems and the entire Vedas. And it is a Vedic injunction that if anything supplement the Vedas is not contradictory to the original Vedas, it naturally becomes an authority. It naturally becomes an authority. So we have now, we are reaching the year 10, We reach in the year 1000. We reach in the year 1017. Who was born in this year? Sorry? Lord Sri Ramanuj. When Lord Sri Ramanuj was born, The influence of Kali Yuga was so great that these poems by the twelve great saints of Sri Vaishnavism was evident, but it was in the background. It was evident, but it was in the background. Also, in line with these Alvars, the disciplic succession continued. The disciplic succession in Sri Vaishnavism from Veda Vyas continued but it was overshadowed again by Kali and it was not prevalent due to the influence of Buddhism and Monism. What is Monism? I am God. I am God. I am God. So where was the Vedas in the mind of people at the birth of Lord Sri Ramanuj. Was it existent or non existent? It was non existent. Non existent. And whenever the Vedas get non existent, 
Does Lord Narayan trust anyone to fix it? So what do you think he would do? What do you think he would do? He will appear because that has been the cycle all the time. That to re-establish the Vedas, it can only be Lord Narayan or his incarnation. So Lord Narayan wrote the Pancharatra Agama. Lord Narayan wrote the Pancharatra Agama. The Pancharatra Agama is authorized in the Mahabharat. Also in the Mahabharat, Lord Narayan appears as Lord Sri Krishna. In the Mahabharat, Lord Narayan appears as Lord Sri Krishna. So in his form as Lord Sri Krishna, in the Mahabharat, Lord Narayan gives us two jewels. What are the two jewels? Bhagavad Gita. And? The Vishnu Sahasra. Lord Narayan in the Mahabharat, amongst many pearls, gives us two of the brightest pearls called the Bhagavad Gita and the Vishnu Sahasranam, the 1000 names of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu, which is his own name. Okay? And he also establishes that he wrote the Pancharatra Agama. And this is confirmed by him in his form as Veda Vyas in the Brahma Sutras that the Pancharatra Agama is a bona fide scripture. scripture. And in the Pancharatra Agama, Lord Sriman Narayan states that he takes four forms. And these forms are Vasudeva, Sankarsana, Pratyumna, and Aniruddha. So who was Lord Sri Ramanuj? Incarnation of Lakshman. Lord Narayan in the Sankarsana form. Lord Sri Ramanuj is Lord Narayan in one of his four forms. And that one of his four forms is Sankarsana. In that form as Sankarsana, he never showed he is Lord Narayan. He never showed he is Lord Narayan. <coughs> like an ordinary human being. Like my stupid self, Acharya Shambhramanuj, I followed Advaita first. Then I followed Dvaita until I learned Vishesh Advaita. Similarly, Lord Narayan, in his form as Lord Ramanuj, was studying Advaita. Advaita. And that guru nearly killed him. Killed him. His own guru nearly kill him.
So I am tying up all the loose ends. This information cannot be refuted by anyone. This information that I am giving you today is simple, is crystal clear, It cannot be refuted by anyone. Whenever chaos reigns, fools become leaders. And then God has to come down and unfold the fool. Unfold the fold. And then when God is not around, he sends his representatives who are gurus. And the Sri Ramanut Sampradaya have at this current moment many, many competent gurus that are doing and expounding the glory of the Lord, par excellence. I am nothing but an insignificant particle at the feet of all the gurus that exist today in the Sri Sampradaya. And with that humility, I am now explaining this absolute form of Vishish Advaita. At the feet, as the lowliest of all the gurus that are existing in the Sri Sampradaya, I am at their feet. And from that position, I am now expounding this absolute philosophy to the Western world and to those that are still confused in the East, because the West were easier to fool. So I am unfooling the West. Let us reconcile what I have stated. Lord Narayan never trusted an ordinary human being to compile the Vedas. He always incarnated and compiled the Vedas. He did it as Veda Vyas. When he rejected the Vedas, he did it himself as Lord Buddha. Then he sent Lord Shiva what is the relationship between Lord Shiva and Lord Narayan? Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnavite. Lord Shiva is the greatest Vaishnavite. In Vaishnavism, he is number one. So Lord Narayan sent his number one to expound a Transtheistic philosophy. And then Lord Narayan, in his form as Sankarsana, took his birth on this earth as an ordinary human being. And he took 60 years. How many years? 60 years. It took him 20 years from Sri Rangam or almost 20 years from Sri Rangam to Kashmir and back to Sri Rangam to read the manuscript of the first of the first disciple of Veda Vyas Bodhihana. Bodhi, Hana, who wrote the first commentary on the Brahma Sutras, 
which was in Vishesh Advaita. Very first commentary on Brahma Sutra written by a disciple of Veda Vyas. Who is Veda Vyas? Lord Sriman Narayan. A disciple of Lord Sriman Narayan, if he writes a commentary, it will be 100% verbatim with the scripture itself. Can there be any deviation? And then Lord Sri Ramanuj, 32 verses of the Bhagavad Gita was commentated by his Guru. Commentated by his Guru. And Lord Sri Ramanuj took these 32 verses that were commentated by his Guru and did the commentary in the Sri Ramanuj Gita Bhashya. Bhashya means commentary. So if Lord Narayan is showing an example that you must supplement the teachings of your Guru and he is Lord Narayan himself, then who are you and I to make our own philosophies? Who are you and I to make our own philosophies because Lord Sri Ramanuj did not make any philosophy. Lord Sri Ramanuj did not make any philosophy. He re-established the Vedas that was lost to the mind of humanity and he followed the disciplic succession. Lord Sri Ramanuj, who is the origin of the Vedas in his form as Lord Narayan, did not change one comma, one full stop, one semicolon of the Vedas then who are you and I to make philosophies in Vedanta? Because if you go to Google, they will tell you Vedanta has three sub-philosophies. Monism, qualified monism, and dualism. Where do you find monism and where do you find dualism in Vedanta? Who gave anyone authority to create a philosophy of monism and dualism? You understand? All of you understand? God compiles the Vedas which is eternal. What does eternal mean, Rishi? Forever. It has always been. Can what is eternal evolve? Vanita Ben. What does evolve mean? from one state to another. If the Vedas is eternal, can it move from one state to another? Can time change the Vedas? The Vedas cannot be changed, no tempered with. Because it is eternal. And whatever is eternal cannot be changed and cannot be tempered with. 
all of you understand so there can be no new cults or cult movements because then it cannot be eternal and if something is not eternal it has a beginning it has a middle and after this discourse it will have an end it will have an end do all of you understand god does not rely upon man or saints or sages to bring in any modification of the vedas if god allows modification of the vedas then god cannot be absolute it means when he breathed the vedas he missed out something padi what it means he missed out something and if he misses out anything can he be absolute all of you understand so lord narayan took his form as sankarsana who is lord sri ramanuj and re established the vedas to its own original supremacy and i'm trying to drill this secret into your head lord narayan compile the vedas in the beginning of kali yuga then he rejected the vedas 2 and 1000 years ago would reason then only he could re establish the vedas which means that there is no other system other than that of lord sri ramanuj which is bona fide and authentic does it not because if anyone rejects one sentence of lord sri ramanuj then he is rejecting the entire vedas and those of you that got time go and read lord sri ramanuj swak he did a meticulous job with the vedas and that is why it took him 60 years he walked to kashmir and came back after 20 years just to get a glimpse of the vedanta sutras by bodhihana and yet he is the origin of vedanta sutras himself who lord sri ramanuj although he is the origin of all vedic knowledge he took 60 years he took him 20 years to walk to kashmir and come back okay and he took him 60 years to put this information together and he put it together with vedic injunctions Lord Sri Ramanuj not one sentence in his writings belongs to him all knowledge is from the Upanishads Brahma Sutra Vishnu Purana he liked the Vishnu Purana because the Vishnu Purana is the purport of vishesh advaita <coughs> vishnu puran is the purport of vishesh advaita <coughs> who is lord ramanuj to lord sri krishna padi 
who is Lord Sri Ramanuj to Lord Sri Krishna? <coughs> His elder brother. His elder brother. And that is the secret. I want to give you. Lord Sri Ramanuj is the elder brother of Lord Sri Krishna and the younger brother of Lord Ram. Ram. Lighty bro, big bro. <laughs> Lighty bro, big bro of the Supreme Lord. Can he ever go wrong? Has anyone got more authority than him to create, make, or supplement anything in the Vedas? Anyone? And this I am expounding to the world that Vishesh Advaita is unparalleled unshakable, solid, and not debatable. But I can clarify any confusion. I can clarify any confusion from any part of the world. Contact me on the various addresses we have on various platforms. Okay? And I want to continue to verify this misconception that Lord Sri Sriman Narayan is an incarnation of Lord Sri Krishna. I want to fix this now in this Sri Krishna Janma Astami and I want to fix it by the same people that perpetuated this misconception. By who? The same people that perpetuated this misconception. So from whose book must I read? from their book. All right? I don't want to take a leaf of their book. I'm just quoting. quoting. If I find my glasses. It's not right here. <coughs> you heard what I said? I don't want to take a leaf of their book. I'm just quoting from the book, Emeta. Are you getting it? Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else getting it? So, how many of you heard of the story of the Govardhan Hill? Hill. You have heard the story. What is the philosophy? That's the philosophy. Why did he hold a hill up? And why did Indra create his downpour? Amita? Because Lord Sri Krishna told his father Nanda Maharaj, he saw everybody excited and about to do something. And he asked his father, like children normally do, Dad, what is this buzz of activity? Sorry, Swamiji said, mustn't use mom and dad. He said, Bab. Pitaji, what is all this activity? 
and Pitaji said that we are going to offer Lord Indra sacrifices. Sacrifices does not mean it means your money, your time and rituals. Rituals, right? And Lord Sri Krishna said, no. Take that which you are offering him, Lord Indra, and offer it to the Gomata. And offer it to the Gomata. Gomata. Because Lord Indra is a mere cosmic administrator. He is not the creator of rain. He is the dispenser of rain. Lord Sriman Narayan is the creator of rain. Do not worship any cosmic administrator. Rather worship the Go Mata. And through the Go Mata, all the cosmic administrators who reside within the Go Mata, and the Go Mata and all the cosmic administrators reside within Lord Sriman Narayan himself. So Lord Shri Krishna warned 5,000 years ago, no rituals, no rituals. And when Lord Indra got upset, what did he do? He created a downpour and what was the age of Lord Shri Krishna? Seven. You didn't know how many years you married <laughs> yesterday. How will you know Lord Sri Krishna's age, which happened 5,000 years ago? And I, he was seven. So now, the community, the villages are questioning Nanda Maharaj. Who's this lighty who held up Kovartan Hill with his little finger? Who's this? Paddy? Oh, who's this Krishna? Okay. So he asked, who's this small boy? They asked him the father, who is this little boy? At the age of seven, who held up Govardhan Hill. So who will know the identity of his son best? Who? The father. And who will know the past and present through which medium Will the father know that? Of his son. Through a saint. So when Lord Sri Krishna was born, which guru was at his birth? Karga Muni. Karga Alright, so let's see now, let's, this is called verdict evidence. Acharya Ji is not sitting here blowing his trumpet. Acharya Ji is giving you evidence. And from the same people who has caused a confusion in terms of Lord Sri Krishna and Lord Narayan. So this is what the translation to this conversation that happened in Sanskrit is stating. 
Canto 10, Chapter 2, Text 14. On the one hand, this boy is only seven years old, and on the other, we see that he has lifted the great Govardhana. Therefore, O King of Raja, a doubt about your son arises within us. And Nanda Maharaj, text 15, replied, and I quote, O cowherd men, just hear my words and let all your doubts concerning my son be gone. Some time ago, Garga Muni spoke to me as follows about this boy. And Garga Muni had said, Your son Krishna appears as an incarnation in every millennium. In the past, he assumed three different colors, white, red, and yellow. And now he has appeared in a blackish color. Text 16, Canto 10, Chapter 2. Text 17. For many reasons, this beautiful son of yours sometime appears, appeared previously as the son of Vasudeva. Therefore, those who are learned sometimes calls this child Vasu Deva. Text 18. For now this is Garga Muni speaking to Vasu Nanda Maharaj, the father. This is Garga Muni, the guru speaking to Nanda Maharaj, the father. And Nanda Maharaj is explaining these, this conversation to the confused cowherd people, the villagers when they saw Lord Sri Krishna lift the Govardhan hill with his little finger at the age of seven. And Karga Muni's quotation follows, For this son of yours, there are many forms and names according to his transcendental qualities and activities. These are known to me, but people in general do not understand them. And this is Garga Muni, again, continuing his quote in text 19, to increase the transcendental bliss of the cow herd men of Gokula, this child will always act auspiciously for you. And by his grace only, you will surpass all difficulties. And Garga Muni continues, verse 20, O Nanda Maharaj, as recorded in history, when there was irregular, incapable government, Indra, having been dethroned, and when honest people were being harassed and disturbed by thieves, this child appeared in order to curb the rogues and to protect the people and enable them to flourish. Garga Muni continues, text 21. Demons cannot harm the demigods who always have Vishnu on their side. Similarly, any person or group attached to the all auspicious Krishna cannot be defeated by enemies. Garga Muni continues, text 22. And I want 
all of you to underline and highlight this verse. Therefore, O Nanda Maharaj, this child of yours is as good as Narayana. Repeating this sentence, Therefore, O Nanda Maharaja, this child of yours is as good as Narayana. In his transcendental qualities, opulence, name, fame, and influence, he is exactly like Narayana. Thus, you should not be astonished by his activities. And Nandam text 23, Nanda Maharaj continued, After Garga Rishi spoke these words to me and returned home, I began to consider that Krishna, who keeps us free from trouble, is actually an expansion of Lord Narayana. Who is saying this? Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj. Nanda Maharaj is Lord Sri Krishna's eternal father. Eternal father. Vasudeva was his material father for only three lifetimes. But Nanda Maharaj is his eternal father. He takes the role of his eternal father and who will know the son best? Can anyone supersede the knowledge of Nanda Maharaj who is the eternal father of Lord Sri Krishna? or plays the role of Lord Sri Krishna whenever he incarnates. Is there anyone that can change this? Can it be changed? So Lord Sri Krishna is an expansion of Lord Sriman Narayan as, as declared by his eternal father, Nanda Maharaj, from the translation of Swami Prabhupada's Canto 10, Chapter 26, Srimad Bhagavatam. <coughs> I have information corroborating what I have stated. I can discuss from today until eternity. Eternity. That Lord Sriman Narayan is the supreme personality of Godhead. The only philosophy that exists in Sanatan Dharma and that is equated and synonymous with Sanatan Dharma is Vishesh Advaita. And all other philosophies must be rejected and refuted. Any philosophy on God that is not based on the absolute truth will have no absolute bearing. There is no reason, there is absolutely no reason to create a philosophy when God has created the entire Vedas himself. If any saint or sage creates a philosophy, then God cannot be absolute. So the Sri Sampradaya, the Sri Ramanuj Sampradaya, the Brahma Sampradaya, the Rudra Sampradaya, and the Kumara Sampradaya, all in the original, in the original form except 
Lord Sriman Narayan and Vishesh Advaita. So the Brahma Sampradaya must expound Vishesh Advaita. The Kumara Sampradaya must expound Vishesh Advaita. And the Rudra Sampradaya must expound Vishesh Advaita. Now, the origins of all these Sampradayas are lost. And you cannot have a branch if there is no root. You can't say, I am a branch of this Sampradaya, if the root has disappeared. Is it possible? Is it possible? Because the root of every Sampradaya is Vishesh Advaita. And I think I will prove this in my next discourse. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow we want to celebrate. Tomorrow we want to celebrate. I was going to dance. But unfortunately my dancing partner is leaving. But we'll dance again. No, no dancing today. Today is serious, militant, Vishesh Advaita or nothing. Vishesh Advaita or nothing. Okay? And I'm asking the world, whoever is listening to this discourse, and I want Vishwadar to make this request in his summary. If anybody is confused about what I have stated, please contact me and you must give my details where I can be contacted from any institution, from any part of the world. I spent 10 years in the military. I underwent severe military training. And I spent many years in law. I spent many years in law. I only know one side. I only know the right side. I only know the right side. I can't say you, my Sanatan Dharma Bruce. You can live next to me. We are all Bruce in. Sanatana Dharma. I cannot say that. I cannot say that. If you are wrong, you are wrong. Even if you are my brother. Or son. Or wife. Sanatana Dharma does not allow for wrong. Why? Because Sanatana Dharma does not belong to man. It belongs to God. And God is the purest of all beings. Can there be any wrong allotted to God? So can the Guru say, hey, okay, we all in Sanatan Dharma. No. I am here to speak the absolute truth as it is expounded in the scriptures. Lord Sri Ramanuj did this a thousand years ago. He is an incarnation of Lord Narayan. I am a representative, a minute, insignificant dust particle at the feet of my Sampradaya. But I will not deviate from expounding the absolute truth, notwithstanding the collateral damage that can be caused to others. All the information that I am giving, you need not go to the Himalaya mountains and get it. You need not suffer austerities and penances 
to get this information that I have given you. All you have to do is buy some data. And if you don't have money to buy data, go to a huge shopping complex or an airport or a restaurant, buy a cup of tea and ask them for their Wi-Fi code. On their Wi-Fi code, go and Google what I have stated. Lord Sri Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Vishish Advaita is Sanatan Dharma. Sanatan Dharma is Vishish Advaita. Vishish Advaita is Vedanta. Vedanta is Vishish Advaita. In this system, no other systems can survive. And where will you find this? In Google. <laughs> Go and look. You'll find it. And I'm, op I'm opening my own internet. It's called Guru Girl. <laughs> Guru Girl. And you'll find it on my website. Okay? If you're getting confused in Google, then Go to Gurugal, which is on the Acharya, Sham Ramanuj Foundation and the Sri Narayan Dham. Then take that information that I am giving and cross-reference it. Because this is what you do for verification. You take the information and you cross-reference it. Alright? You cross-reference it. And as a part in short. As a Parting shot. All right. I said that the Vedas and the teachings do not ever evolve because spirituality is eternal. However, there are four yugas and there are four seasons on how man should live and connect to God. To connect to God in Satyuk you do meditation. To connect to God in Treta Yoga, you do gorgeous sacrifices and rituals. To connect to God in Dwapara Yoga, you do de deity worship. To connect to God in Kali Yoga, you chant His name. You meditate and just before Lord Sri Krishna left, who heard of Bhisma? Who was Bhisma? The grandfather of both sides. Both sides. When he was on his bed of arrows, when he was on his bed of arrows. Lord Sri Krishna asked Yudhisthira to ask Tishma, who knows past, present and future, which is the best method of worship in Kali Yuga. And on that bed, of arrows, Bhishma gave Yudhistra in the presence of Lord Sri Krishna the Vishnu Sahasra Nam. And the authentic chanting in Kalyo instructed by Lord Sri Krishna to ask Bhishma and Bhishma gave him the thousand names of Vishnu in the Vishnu Sahasrana and that is the chanting in this Kali Yuga. 
witness Lord Sri Krishna expounder of this mode of worship Bhishma in the presence of Lord Sri Krishna can I make it any more simple that Lord Sri Narayan is the supreme personality of Godhead and the chanting of the thousand names of Vishnu is the bona fide chanting in Kali Yuga, as endorsed by Lord Sri Krishna himself. Are there any questions? Yes, there's one question from uh, Vishwadar Ramanuj Das. He wants to know why does it then say in the Padma Purana that there are four bona fide main sampradayas? He wants to know if he's getting confused. Yes, he has to be confused because I already answered. I answered this question about the four sampradayas. What time did he ask this question? Sorry? Just a few minutes ago. Did I answer this question? Yes. Yes. All four sampradayas were supposed to expound Vishish Advaita. Gurus born in the system formed their own sampradayas within the sampradayas themselves which is now been refuted. It was refuted a thousand years ago, refuted and rejected, and now we are refuting and rejecting. Because from this, this cancer of certain gurus making their own philosophy continues to spread. It is an eternal thing in Sanatan Dharma. It keeps Sanatan Dharma alive. Every guru, I'm not teaching hatred in guru. Every guru has a job to do. Like most of the Vaishnavites hate Adi Shankaracharya. They don't know he was instructed by Lord Sriman Narayan to expound a particular philosophy which was positive in that space of time. Or else Buddhism would have not been kicked out. Then the Lord came himself and kicked out that philosophy as Lord Sri Ramanuj. Okay? So whichever guru, whatever he has done with his philosophy, he is a puppet in the hands of Lord Narayan. Lord Narayan. So if he gave an alternate philosophy, and it is just that your guru is now given the Absolute philosophy. The guru principle is the same. Each guru had a job to do, whether he gave the absolute or the alternate. You are just lucky your guru is given the absolute. absolute. Okay? And this is what keeps Sanatana Dharma alive. Otherwise, Sanat and Dharma will be other, like other religions. If you don't, then you'll be doomed. Isn't? There are religions that tell you if you don't, you'll be doomed. In Sanat and Dharma, they tell you, you do what you want. We have a spreadsheet for you called Karma. We have a spreadsheet for you called Karma. You are the soul. You never die. You just take different bodies and keep the movie. Yeah, Sopi started with Lord Sriman Narayan. His one Sopi last 311 trillion, 40 billion years. And look at how we all act in his Sopis. And whilst we in his Sopi, we create in our own Sopi by watching a another Sopi. <laughs> You didn't get that, Emita. Okay. You'll have to watch this insert again. Are there any questions? No, there's no more. Any questions? Are you all clear? Are you all clear? A guru should not be teaching his disciples hatred for another guru. 
in their personal capacity. But we should be teaching you to reject philosophies that are not synthesized with the Vedas. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because if I teach you hatred for other gurus, then I'm defeating the purpose of discoursing. So we are not fighting with other gurus, we are not fighting with other institutions, but in order to propel the absolute truth, the relative truths have to get dismantled somewhere along the line. All of you understand? Jai Shri Manara. Jai Shri Manara.